Apparently, there'll be no VADA testing in place for the July 20th pay-per-view showdown between Manny Pacquiao and Keith Thurman. Now, I'm not shocked by this. I'm not surprised. Um, I strongly suspect, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. This is just a suspicion. I strongly suspect that one or perhaps both of these participants is taking something they shouldn't be. That's just a suspicion. I've got no conclusive proof whatsoever. But I do find it concerning that a fight of this magnitude doesn't have VADA testing in place and instead they'll just have the standard Nevada State Athletic Commission testing. And to my understanding, the Nevada State Athletic Commission only tests fighters after the fight, which for anybody who knows anything about PED use, is, you know, you'll know that that's completely useless. I mean, it's uh, testing somebody after the fight. You, you might as well not, not test them at all. You know, it's just to keep up appearances because people have usually cycled off whatever they've been on long, long, long before the fight itself. So they're probably going to test negative. And how stringent are those tests anyway? You know, here's what it is. Pacquiao, for many years, was accused by Floyd Mayweather and many other people on that side of the fence of being on performance-enhancing drugs. Pacquiao then threatened to sue, or maybe did sue, Mayweather for defamation or, or something like that. And after that, Mayweather stopped publicly accusing him because <laughs> it was pretty uh, full-on the accusations coming from the Mayweather side for a long time. So I'm not here to say that Pacquiao is on anything uh, conclusively. I'm not here to say that Keith Furman is on anything conclusively. But as I say, I would be surprised, let me just put it this way, if at least one of them isn't on something. And I'm not discounting the possibility that it could be Keith. I mean, if you look at Keith Furman's situation right now with all these injuries... One reason that some athletes take performance-enhancing drugs is to uh, rehabilitate, to heal themselves from injuries. This is well known. When you someone who's been as injured as Keith Furman has been, would you go down that road? I do believe that PED use in the United States in terms of boxing, is more rampant than it is in the UK. Oh, it goes on in the UK too. Don't get it twisted. The UK boxing scene is not 100% clean, far from it. But I do get the feeling in the United States, the situation is far worse. And the main reason is because in the United States, you've got multiple different commissions. This is where the problem is. And multiple different commissions that have different standards per state. In the UK, there's only one commission, the British Board of Boxing Control, and they have their uh, drug testing arm called UCAD, UK uh, Anti-Doping. And the British Board of Boxing Control and UCAD have jurisdiction over all boxing that takes place in the UK. When you've got one commission and one drug testing agency handling it all, there's less opportunity for uh, people to slip through the net, going to a different state, you know, different levels of stringent stringency uh, when it comes to testing, etc. And of course, on top of UCAD, you also have some fights in the UK where they have VADA in addition to the UCAD testing. Yeah, and remember, UCAD is not like the Nevada State Athletic Commission testing. No, UCAD do Olympic-style drug testing similar to what VADA do. Not quite as strict as VADA. It's definitely not, but it's similar. It's certainly far stricter. The UCAD testing is far stricter than what, they, what the Nevada State Athletic Commission do. Yeah, so it's more difficult for PED users in British boxing to get away with it long-term than it is for many fighters in the United States because they've got different commissions and, you know, what have you. And the commissions are less stringent. So, 
Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Again, I've spoken about my views on PED use. I am kind of conflicted about how we punish PED users. Um, one of the ways to eliminate or at least greatly reduce the risk of PED use in major fights is to select a location, maybe a country, a particular jurisdiction, where drug testing is particularly stringent and to set up shop there and don't leave as a promoter, as a fighter, etc. Don't leave. That is an argument in favor of a British fighter setting up shop in the UK and not traveling to the United States, not traveling elsewhere unless there's VADA, you know, etc. Because you don't know how stringent the Nevada State Athletic Commission tested. It's certainly not as stringent as UCAD. So why am I going to go over there when my opponent could be on all sorts? Okay, I'm not saying that opponent shouldn't travel. I'm just playing devil's advocate and saying that might be a reason why people don't travel. Because for example, there have been many American fighters who have said, we ain't traveling to the UK because you got those corrupt judges over there. Right? If that is seen as a legitimate reason not to travel, then it is also a legitimate reason for a fighter to say, well, you ain't got stringent, stringent drug testing over there. So I ain't go, going over there. Do you understand? Now, obviously, we don't want to get into a race to the bottom where nobody's traveling anywhere because then, then we're not going to see a lot of fights. But if you... It, th there was a time when... They were looking to try and make, apparently there were investors and all kind of people who were looking to try and make London the Las Vegas of Europe, build a whole heap of casinos and stuff like that. And yeah, just turn it into the Las Vegas of Europe where massive boxing events would be hosted, not just AJ, because that's all it ever turned out to be, was just, you know, AJ fighting at Wembley every now and then. No, they were looking to try and make loads of mega fights in London, not, you know, not just involving British fighters either, but other uh, major fighters, the Floyd Mayovers of the world, the Pacquiao's of the world, uh, when they were still big. That was the plan. Now, if you had a situation like that, where they managed to, you know, make somewhere like London, the Las Vegas of, of Europe, um, with the stringent drug testing that you can have, or more stringent than Nevada, for example, and, you know, if you had the incentive, the, the money, etc., for people to want to, uh, you know, come to the UK to fight, as, as was the case for a while, um, the money was in the UK for a long time. Before the zone came on the scene, there wasn't much money in the United States for a lot of big fights. You know, after Mayweather retired and Pacquiao was on the decline, the money shrunk massively and then the UK kind of took over as well as you know when Klitschko lost the UK took over for a good while in terms of where the big money was but now it has shifted back in favor of the United States where they're making more money more, you know, for a lot of fights in the US than they are in the UK but had they taken advantage of that situation in the UK not only would it would it have been good for the business of boxing in the UK and whatnot and bringing more talent through but also potentially for stamping out PED use, yeah? Because again, the UK under one jurisdiction with more stringent drug pro drug testing protocol in place, that's better than you know fighting in the random states in America where you don't know how strict the, the uh, testing is and all that kind of stuff, so... Anyway, let me know what you guys think about all the points I've raised in this video. It's happening I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts 
and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.